Hi, I'm Colleen. And I'm Chrissy. And we are the Sea Sisters. And on this episode, we're going to talk about our grand update that you've all (laughs) been waiting for. So, Chrissy, (laughs) how's it been going for you? Actually, it's been going good. And now I had my, I had a tumor removed from my brain, another one. Um, And that was... I'm getting all the months confused, but it was on May. It was supposed to be a different day. It was planned for like May. No, it was a June. June. My actual surgery was on June 29th, but it was planned for June 23rd. And what happened in that situation? Because something happened, didn't it? Yeah. So I was planned. For my surgery, well, I was having all kinds of symptoms, mm-hmm. and that's why I did not show up a couple times on the podcast, because I was um, getting these dizzy spells when I'd get up, and I'd feel like I was going to pass out, and then we found out, like, some of them were actual, like, focal seizures, and then I had horrible migraines, and I was getting hot, and then I was, like, throwing up, throwing up all over myself, because I couldn't get out of the bed. Yeah, It was actually awful, and I was like... I wanted my surgery to be rushed up. Right. But they were changing their... Plan. Yeah, they were changing their um, messaging system or whatever, their computer system over. So I feel like that's why they didn't get any of my messages because my neurosurgeon didn't even know I was having focal seizures or my symptoms were getting worse. Mm -hmm. Um, But they put me on steroids and anti-seizure medication and that helped a lot Mm -hmm. especially the steroids because they allow you they took the headaches away and the migraines and made my symptoms go away and I my those headaches could have been causing you to throw up too right yeah I that's what was because nausea medicine did not work um but I was taking ibuprofen and Tylenol and that seemed to help but there was all kinds of inflammation like a fourth of my brain was inflamed Mm mm-hmm with fluid and swelling in it. And that's what happens. It's not the tumor causing the symptoms. It's actually the inflammation and the swelling. And the swelling. Mm-hmm. And the tumor causes that. And yep. then I had a shift in my brain, which causes symptoms too. Yeah, because the pressure, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it causes it to move. Like your brain almost <clears throat> moves to one side or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my MRIs had slowly, the tumor was, I wouldn't say slowly growing, it grew fast. Right. Um, my type of cancer, the tumors can grow like super fast in like a matter of weeks. And that's why you were a little alarmed people weren't getting back to you because it's not something you can just sit on. Mm, yeah. And actually my neuro-oncologist at Duke recommended that I didn't, don't get surgery but when I talked to my neurosurgeon and then I started having symptoms, I was, at first I wasn't going to have surgery. And then I'm like, mm, you know what? I'm going to have to do this. You prayed about it. Yeah. And I prayed about it. And I prayed with my parents and I prayed with my one friend that lives in Florida over the phone. And we talked about it too. Yeah. And you told me like I was, I was just one answer from someone. So I was like, I wish somebody would... When I was praying, I wish somebody would tell me what to do, God. And then there I was. He's not going to... Well, he uses other people. Absolutely. And so the one day you were like, I really feel like you should get this surgery. And I'm like, you know what? That was my answer. And I don't normally like that either. Yeah. And so that was actually an answer to prayer. Because I was, you know, I prayed about it and God's not going to just come down and um, tell me what to do. We all wish that he would, but he's not. He uses other people to tell you. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And it, the timing was... Perfect. Yeah, the perfect. And then I was like, okay, God, that's what you want me to do. Right. So I was like, okay. So I... And I prayed about it, too, and I had a dream. I don't know. I feel like God speaks to me in dreams sometimes. Yeah, especially recently. Oh, yeah. I, I was, like, wrestling with somebody on the... Gr- I feel like I was wrestling with the idea of what to do, mm-hmm. and he told me... It, no matter what you do, it'll be all in my glory. Like, I'll get the glory for it. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, I know what I'm going to do. And so we had the surgery all planned out. Um, and then I went and they have sometimes 
hard time getting my IVs in and they have to put the biggest IVs in you for surgery, like in your wrists and hands. And yeah, they, the pick line and then the regular lines as a secondary. And... Well, they put the, it's an art line and they put mm-hmm. it in, in surgery, mm-hmm. but the other, they had to have two big IVs in. And I'm like, cause sometimes I'm a hard stick. So I, I could have clear liquids the night before the surgery. Sometimes you're like NPO or you can't have anything to drink or eat. But they allowed me to have, like, I could have popsicles or what, um, water. So I drank as much water as I could. Mm-hmm. So my veins would be big or, like, easy to access. And so I did that, and they got my IVs on the first try, and I was ready. You know, I prepared myself. Mm-hmm. And, like, a lot of people had fasted, fasted and prayed for me. Mm-hmm. And then the neurosurgeon came in and looked at my scans because I feel like he didn't think it was tumor. He thought it was necrosis, which is something you can get after radiation with all, which, uh, with all the radiation I have had. Um, he thought that was a big possibility. He didn't actually think it was tumor, so he didn't look at my... I don't feel like he looked at my most recent scan before the surgery because he thought it was... He just assumed. Yeah, he just... I feel like he really like wants the best for me and he's really rooting for me mm-hmm. to live as long as possible um and so he was like i could he was really disappointed he was like <sighs> he just kept sighing and he was like you know what we're not going to be able we he gave me three options and he was like we can wait we don't we don't do the surgery today or we can i forget what else. he gave me two other options i'm like you know what i trust you you choose Right. He was like, and that's when we have to have faith in our doctors mm-hmm. and that God is directing them in the right way. Yeah, and since I had prayed, like since I prayed about it, and I know everyone else had prayed, I trusted whatever happened. I was like, "You make a decision." He's like, "Give me a minute." He was like, "I'm gonna go talk to someone." And here he was talking to my radiation oncologist, mm-hmm. um, and then he came back in and he was like, "Well, we could wait to do this surgery because." we could place these things called gamma tiles that give off some radiation in your brain. And this is like one of the latest treatments too. Yeah. They had never, they never done it. At, they never have done it at that hospital. Oh, so you were the first case? Yes. Awesome. And actually they want to do a story or something on it. Cause yeah. Cause you've been, you've been doing amazing. <laughs> but that, um, I didn't, and actually I should have asked, but I think Dr. Beecher, that's my neurosurgeon. I think he's probably done them before, but not at the hos- at the hospital. But he is all about, like, doing new things and, like, thinking outside the box. And that's why I love him. Like, Because you have somebody having your side. And he was honestly, like, when I'm, my first surgery, I was like, I don't know what neurosurgeon to choose. Like, that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Finding a surgeon, but a neurosurgeon to work on your brain, I was like, and I, I prayed about it. I was like, I don't know what neurosurgeon to choose. And he, I feel like he was sent to me, like someone I worked with, her um, sister actually is a nurse Mm -hmm. in the surgery center. She's like the, uh, she's not a case manager, but she's a scheduling nurse. She just does all the whole schedule for the surgeons. Mm -hmm. And so she messaged me and she was like, Dr. Beecher's an amaz- amazing surgeon. I would go with him. Right. And I was like, okay. Because you always want, like, as a nurse, I can never tell, like, a patient, ooh, don't go with that surgeon. Or, yeah, go with that one. He's really good. Like, you can't do that. I would always tell them, like, ask friends and family. Right. Or I've heard I've heard really good things about this one, that one, and that one. You can't just say just one person. Yeah. Right. All right. So, so he did these three options. And, and what did he finally decide? Um, he decided to, because he was going to actually do a whole, like, take a, the whole um, right frontal lobe out. Like, not a lobectomy, like, in the, I forget when they did that. Like, and one of the, one of the Kennedys, like, she, they did a lobectomy on her. Like, they used to stick, I don't know, they used to just do it, like, all kinds of ways. They, like, a, they did a complete lobotomy on her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's my relative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they were going to do. I yeah. mean, I was like, you're not going to... I asked my neurosurgeon, it's not going to be anything like... There's a movie actually based on it. Like, yeah. I forget what it's called, but he was like, no, because they used to stick p- 
picks in the brain, like right. just stab him in the brain and right up through the nose and everything. Yeah, like they horrific. don't do stuff like that. Yeah, anymore. like really horrific things to psych psychiatric patients yeah. or people they just thought were like, like what was her name? I don't even remember. It started with an M, but anyway, that came. Mary. And it wasn't Mary. It was Marie. I don't remember. But she was actually, like, just being a teenager mm-hmm. and, like, doing normal things that teens do. Yeah, um, it wasn't, like, yeah. She wasn't a, a psych pa- Like, she wasn't doing anything crazy. Like, she wasn't nuts or crazy or anything. But they did that on her. And he was like, no, it's not going to be that. We're just going to take from... Well, and that's the biggest worry when they take something from like that. It it can cause behavioral changes. I mean, all different kinds of changes people don't realize. Mm-hmm. And that's what I told him. I was like, I, as long I just don't want any mobility issues or personality changes. Like, I just want to be myself. And yeah, I don't like, want to turn into a nasty person just because of this. I was like, I don't want to become like a person, like in a trance. Right. Where I can't talk and just be or drooling just on myself. A, fa- a fraction of what you were. Yeah, that's always my worry with brain Mm -hmm. surgery. He was like, no, this, you shouldn't have any deficits from this. And well, even some of the deficits that I saw, like after you had it, like you've come very far. Yeah. And a lot of my deficits were from my first surgery Mm because they had to do a lot of digging because the cancer I have, it gets like fingers Mm -hmm. and the fingers grow. And then I don't. I don't know how to explain it, but he had to dig the fingers out, which I'm glad he did because that... Almost like crabs with the, the claws <laughs> when they kind of like hang on to something. Yeah, and tentacles. That's what I'd call Yeah, it. tentacles. And then they can spread like other places and cause other tumors. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad he got it out, but it caused like some right-sided deficit. Mm-hmm. But But I've seen strength more and more. So he decided to do the tiles, right? Mm-hmm. And so how with... long did you have to wait for that? A week. That's a long time. A week, uh, eight days, actually. A week and I had my first surgery was supposed to be on a Tuesday, but then it was next week on a Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And then with Dr. Doc- Morgan, that's my radiation, radiation oncologist. Oncol- yes. And they decided both together that would be a good option for me. And mm-hmm. he didn't think he could get it all with my if they went ahead and did the surgery that day. Right. And there maybe be some tumor left there. And he was like, I want to do the best possible. Like, he always wants to do the best job possible. And he felt like it would just be a surgery that basically would defeat the purpose of even doing a craniotomy. Because you'd still have to go in later. Right. Where it would just be growing back, like, mm-hmm. almost automatically. Because it's the type of tumor that grows quickly. Mm-hmm. And so I waited a week and then... He was, oh, and they, he uses this stuff called um, gliolin, which I love it. It's like newer too in the last couple years, Mm -hmm. but it makes the tumor, it just makes glioma, like glioblastoma is a glioma, and it makes it glow like pink and purple. Mm -hmm. And they're able to see it, like, because he describes the brain surgery as like, he wears these goggles, like it's like playing a video game. Right. And if you watch, like, there's gliolin videos, but... It just, he's able to zap or like take all the um, tumor out mm-hmm. that's glioblastoma or glioma, and so that that's what he did. And then he was able to get it all and then place the tiles. And the tiles only take like an extra five minutes to mm-hmm. put in. And so I think I had and you had minimal bleeding too, right? Because I mean, everybody would what people don't also know is you do have a little bit of bleeding after, but it does get absorbed. Mm-hmm. Um, which I didn't realize yeah. until. And they're able to, when you watch that video of glial, I mean, or any brain surgery, they're able to like cauterize the, when they're, it's bleeding, right. they're able to cauterize that really quickly and stop the bleeding. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I looked at my last surgical report cause I'm, I tried finding this one. I can't find it, but it only said, I think it, cause you can read all that happened during a surgery and all the medications mm-hmm. you received. And it said like 15 ml right. milliliters. And that's not a lot. No. That's like. Not that's a lot. very minimal. That's like three of those things for medication you give your kid. Right. Like three little cups. Yeah. Here's your Tylenol for your headache. Yeah. You're so good. that's not a lot Mm-mm. at all. 
But then um, they place those tiles, which takes an extra five minutes after your surgery. And that's uh-huh. working along with your radiation oncologist? Well, the, those tiles, like, I don't, even, I don't know how to say it. They put off radiation just in the tumor or in the cat brain cavity or tumor cavity where the tumor was mm-hmm. and it doesn't go into healthy tissue it just helps um any if there's any tumor left over remnants like even like a speck it helps yeah remnants that's a good word it helps like radiate that because i wasn't i'm not allowed to get any more radiation because i've already had a lot mm-hmm. already had maybe like i would say 60 treatments like 30 from my last surgery and 30 from my first surgery. And the more that you have with radiation, isn't it true that it can cause a higher volume of necrosis? Yeah. 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 Which radiation occurred? I never even knew about it. Like, even after my, well, before my first radiation treatment, I I think it's just something I was like, oh, okay. And then I'm on a Facebook page for glioblastoma, Mm -hmm. and people are talking about it. But I think it happens in, like, a lot of older or elderly people. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that is, but it seems like... It's because their brain is older, so it's harder for them to heal. Us, apparent young bucks, can heal quicker. (laughs) So if if there is any kind of presence, it could actually reverse it. That's who, like, because people get on there and ask questions and like my dad or my wife or my husband and they and it was mainly like older candidates Mm -hmm. so i was like i wasn't worried too much about it for radiation necrosis but that's what they thought this tumor was i think in the um, biopsy it said it was like partially it was some of it was necrosis but a lot of it was like my tumor right so but but they were able to get yeah, and then afterwards, um, my surgeon said he my MRI looked awesome. He was he was like confident in it that it looked good. And you were you were healing pretty good too, right? Yeah. After. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I feel like I this surgery was like a little harder than the first and second one actually. But I feel like it's because I was sitting on my behind for three weeks not feeling good and not doing anything Mm -hmm. because I couldn't even barely get off the couch I couldn't I couldn't even make my own food or do anything um but you also had your friend talk about that when your friend got you to help you get out of bed and stuff like that which was really awesome yeah so I was having trouble getting out of my bed Mm -hmm. and then that was causing me to throw up all over myself and almost pee myself (laughs) Trying to get out of bed in the middle of the night. Yeah, and then my awesome husband, God bless him, he was helping me a lot. Like, yeah. dealing with, like, taking my clothes off, like, with vomit on them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my mom, too, she helped me a lot with, like, laundry and just sitting with me. So that was nice, too. Yeah. And I appreciate that. And so your recovery from this has been it's quite been a- phenomenal. Well, and it's actually been a little slower. With my first surgery, I was back driving. I was back to work in two weeks. But even with right-sided deficit, I. but this time, I, I mean... It was a slower process, but it seems like it was a more... Pro, I, I want to say profitable, but more productive process. Yeah. And the thing I'm so thankful for and that God prevented anything... My deficit should have been in my left side this time, but I don't have any deficits there. None. None, no. And even your right side seems like it's doing better. Like, even I can see it in your face. You have more strength. You have more power. And it looks like you can see better. Yeah. Almost. My right eyelid was, like, down. And I did look like I had a stroke, but I didn't. Um, I think it was just because I was tired. Like, I was weak, and I'm weaker and more fatigued my right side is more, I wouldn't call it weakness, but it's like my coordination is mm-hmm. more off. Well, I think you also were frustrated in the situation that things were not progressing as quickly. So you're kind of pushing yourself a little too much in some aspects. And then in other spa- aspects, you were kind of like, all right, I need to rein it back. It, it gets frustrating. I've watched more mo- more movies and TV in this these last months, mm-hmm. couple months, than I have my whole life. 
Except mm-hmm. maybe when I was a kid because I watched a lot of cartoons. Right. But I'm like, I'm not a couch potato. And mm-hmm. I just felt like I was becoming a part of the couch. Right. Like I, felt, I would say, I'm, I'm just going to melt into the couch and become a part of it. And no one will see me. <laughs> right. Now, now talk about the most recent um, results. Yeah, so I went to my neurosurgeon for a second follow-up because I stay, most people only have the first one. Mm-hmm. At least that's what my one friend in Colorado said. But um, I feel like my neurosurgeon, I stay pretty, like, um, contacted with him because mm-hmm. he kind of wants to watch how I progress yep. in his handiwork, I guess. But and before, He takes pride in his work. And, yeah. and you have been, like, miracles upon miracles, honestly. When you look at every step that you, you've done and every step that has happened, you can see God's hand in everything, not just on you or, or around you, but the effect that you have had on people around you. Because I remember before when we first were meeting, you were having trouble finding hope. And now I'm seeing a light in you and, and a strength in you that I have never seen before. And it's just such an inspiration, even to me. Which, I always tell people, it's just God. It's God. Not just God. God, but yeah, it's God. <laughs> and I feel like, I don't know how people do this or anything else without him. But it's know. the calmness bef- like beyond all understanding that he has provided us. Mm-hmm. But not just that. He kind of is just like, all right, my children, you're doing your work that I have asked you to do. I am going to show you, which I don't normally do, exactly the results that are happening Mm -hmm. just so you can get some of that strength from that to keep going my child i feel that Mm -hmm. so you got your results yeah and um he's he was he said he was i forget the word he used but he was not impressed but he was he felt good about my results i haven't um Duke looks at my results, too, and I haven't heard back from them on what their stance is. But mm-hmm. but my neurosurgeon was, he was um, satisfied with them and thought they looked good. There's, Almost like it was promising. And yeah. it's kind of funny to say in a situation like that, but it is promising. Yeah. And someone asked me yesterday, so you're in remission? I'm like, no, my can they never use the word remission with my cancer like because no. it, it can't be cured. They'll say NED, N-E-D, mm-hmm. like no evidence of disease, but they never say cured or in remission. Um, yeah, I have to learn all these new, <laughs> these new, like, and, what are they called? Not. I know what you're talking about. Not acronyms. Abbreviations. Yeah, abbrevi- yeah. I was like, I feel like I'm dealing with the Marine Corps all over again. Can we not do abbreviations? Can you just say what it is, please? Like, we're dealing with people with, you know, just had a craniotomy. <laughs> just had brain surgery can, can we not try to make it more difficult <laughs> i can remember my name give me a break <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i can't remember that i'm like oh yeah yeah or my phone number but so yeah he was he has high hopes i guess for me i have high hopes for you too i know god has a plan mm-hmm and I so I uh, know what it is, but I'm finding out <laughs> and you got better be careful. What yeah, because I'm like, God, just show me what my purpose is or your purpose. <laughs> it used to be my purpose. Just show me a purpose. And yeah, I couldn't even let you have this one, right? <laughs> Why am I here in this world? Just like show me. And if you ask, he'll show you. And the amazingness of how he put us together in so many ways is crazy. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess I should start with what. What's going on with me now? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Pauline, <laughs> what's been going on with you? <laughs> so, Chrissy, um, I guess we are sea sisters in all sense of the word because I was having migraines for seven days. And I told you to go to the ER, right? <laughs> you did. You and did. Then, You're like, your rescue meds aren't working. Just go to the ER. They make the concoctions. It's fine. So, they have a migraine cocktail. Yeah. So, I dropped my daughter off at summer camp. I go drive myself to the ER because it's just a migraine. They hurt, whatever. I get in there and they're just like, okay, um, we need to do a CT scan on you. And I'm like, um, okay, because of migraines. All right. They do a CT scan and they come back and they are chalk white. And I'm like, 
And that's not abnormal to do a CAT scan for my, usually, I mean, sometimes they do them and sometimes they don't. Like right. if you have a history of migraines. I do. Yeah. And then sometimes they won't do them. So thankfully they did. Especially in this aspect. Mm -hmm. So I called my girlfriend, Rachel. I told her I'm at the ER and it's something serious. She thinks I have a stroke, calls my husband at work, tells him he needs to get his butt down here to the ER because she thinks I'm having a stroke. She's <laughs> freaking out. He gets down there and they're like, all right, so we got something to tell you. Um, I, you need to sit down. And um, your wife has a tumor that is pushing on her brain and it has moved it to the side and is causing immense swelling. We need to rush her to Wilmington um, Hospital, and she needs to have an emergency craniotomy. And he's like, well, can I drive her there? Does she have to take an ambulance? And they're like, nope, she has to take an ambulance. First time ever in the back of an ambulance when it was me doing this. Now, it was crazy because everybody, every nurse, every doctor, all prayed with me. We get to Wilmington. Um, the neurologist prayed with me. The anesthesiologist prayed with me. The nurse prayed with me. Then we had people from church come and be with my husband. Thank God for that, because this was all happening so rapidly, so, so quick. Before you can ever even wrap your head around it. Even wrap my head about it. <laughs> That's like a play no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so. What happened was there was there was so many God's hand in it. So there was a gentleman in the waiting room that went up to one of my girlfriends from church and was just like, I don't normally say this, but um, I have to say that it feels like the Holy Spirit is in this room. And she's like, absolutely is. And it's because of that girl over there. Um and that ke still gets me choked up because I know that the Holy Spirit's hand was in everything. I had people praying for me that weren't even Christians praying for me and praying over me. Every single person that I came into contact, and when I, when I say in this form of what I was going through, it's got to be at least over 100 people by now praying for me or praying over me while going through this. So they removed a, a encapsulated tumor. Um, they, they got it all. They tested it. It's metastatic breast cancer. Then they did a chest x-ray. And I have, so I have six spots in my brain that are small uh, tumors. And then I have four or five spots in my lungs. Um, now with metastatic breast cancer, it, the first three places it goes to is the brain, the lungs, and the liver. Never knew that until now. Yeah, I wouldn't know so, that either. So two out of three ain't bad, I guess. I don't know. Uh, so I got this. Um, so I did a craniotomy. Um, they did not have any staples. It was, they did the foam. They didn't even shave my head. So you wouldn't even know. So apparently the next day, you're not supposed to get up out of bed and walk to the bathroom by yourself with a craniotomy. <laughs> the next I've day. I always did, but. I did. And the nurse is like. supposed to be orders so you can get out of bed. and Yeah. Last time I was like, I want to get up. And they were like, no, there's no, like, you can't because there's no orders. And I'm like. I was like, either you take the catheter out and I go to the bathroom or I'm going to the bathroom. So I did it easy because I'm normal. I get dizzy anyways before this. So I got up and I walked and went to the bathroom and came back perfectly fine. And she's like, you're literally a walking miracle because that does not happen. You are cognitive right after surgery. You're texting people back and forth like cognitively it's like it never happened and I was like yeah and I have an appetite now but you guys won't let me eat because they were trying to do a bronchoscopy which is where they go through your throat and they get a biopsy of your lung and, at, and that was really important to me because I needed to make sure that the metastatic breast cancer that's in my lungs is the same as my head um, that way we would know the right course of treatment to do because metastatic breast cancer is not a death sentence anymore. There's so many different options out there, and especially because I'm HER2 uh, positive, there's a lot. So um, the only thing that changed was I am no longer estrogen receptor positive. I'm negative. 
I'm all this is also does none that, of its does genetic. That happen a lot where yeah. it changes. Yeah, it can, especially when it goes into metastatic. Your hormone levels can change, and I was like, so the hysterectomy was just it wasn't pointless because I got two tumors out that were benign, but um, and I don't have to worry about all that. But I love the fact that I have to go through menopause with the hot flashes and everything with all of this that causes it too. <laughs> so much fun, and being um, on steroids that. Makes it even worse. Yeah. So I'm still red in the face, still getting the swelling. Um, but yeah, I mean, finding all of this out, I was shell shocked. My kids are dealing with this so well. My husband. I was going to ask that how they were doing. Harley is sticking by my side. It is. I mean, she's eight. It, it mentally wise, you can't comprehend this. Mm-hmm. And um, Jr. He's funny um, because he's just like, Mom. I already know God got you on the God this. So I hope you don't mind. But um, I'm gonna set up a prayer group. Um, since we have prayer groups for adults, we're gonna set up a prayer group for the teens. Um, not just through our church, but for our community, because I feel we need prayer group for teens to pray for our issues. So that's going to be my mission. That's what God wants me to do right now. And I was like, Aww. all right, will you pray that's about great. it? Pray for his direction. And I think that's a great idea because mm-hmm. he used to go to prayer group with me every Friday. Um, so I think that's great. They're at Camp Caraway right now, having the time of their life and just being kids, which I love. I don't like to tell them all too much since they're so young. Yeah. I think that's good because, like you said, they don't understand a lot. Like, no. I mean, I think they understand more than we think. Mm-hmm. But I think some of it, they just don't. I think you got to do you know. age appropriateness in a situation yeah. like this. Um, Each kid is different. They're going to need therapy. Harley, I already told her I was going to get her therapy, and she screamed at me that she is not going to talk to anybody because she has nothing to say to anybody. She is just angry. Um, at she's, She didn't say she was angry at God. She said she's angry at cancer. And so she is going to pray with God to remove that devil <laughs> of a cancer because it's not welcome here. <laughs> That's a good prayer to pray. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so I pray that God will give me uh, the ears to hear of his direction and his um, comforting words and to know where to go and then give me eyes to see of the direction he wants me to go in the situation. Because I know, just like before, there's a reason for all of this. Mm -hmm. Um, I just don't know what it is. And... um, we will figure it out, but we have a good game plan in place. I am going to do my simulation on Friday where they put the mask on and mark it out. But the type of... Um, your mask is different where you're, you can blink your eye. It doesn't cover your eyes or mouth. It doesn't. And actually, the cool thing about it... so That's what bothered me in my mask. It covered my eyes, so I couldn't open my eyes. Once they were closed, they were closed. Like, right. You couldn't even... So it's um, called a sterostatic radio surgery. It is like laser pinpoint, like a, a surgical laser pinpoint that works along with my neurosurgeon um, and my radio oncologist, which is the same as yours, yeah. which when I went was you drove me to the, to the radio oncologist and we found out we got the same one. So I know we got someone good. And then, um, and then I was always joking. I was like, Chrissy, I can't even give you this one. We're, we're, uh, in all sense of the word, sea sisters now. Yeah. <laughs> We're really in this are. together for everything. And I couldn't ask for a better partner and fighter in this because I feel like, we definitely balance each other out. We have the same sarcastic sense of humor, joking, you know, how I joked, you know, my brother's like, oh, it's okay. They just cut the stupid out, (laughs) you know, and stuff like that. But like, you've got to laugh about a situation and some of the ridiculousness sometimes. Life is too serious and God wants us to laugh too. Mm -hmm. And and just, so I talk about um, this with my girlfriend um, who's going through cancer, Um, right now. And I said, there's a difference between having faith in God and then having faith on God. 
and me and you right now are having faith on God. We need to have it completely put in his hands and not have our hands trying to pull Mm -hmm. and take power away from him for him to do what he can do. He is the ultimate physician. So it could be easy enough that me and you tomorrow, all of a sudden we are perfectly fine and it is gone. Mm-hmm. And there is no explanation about it. Because guess what? We have had miracles upon miracles upon miracles already happen for. And I truly believe in that. And I, I'm leaning into my faith more than ever. And I feel that you have helped me with that. I mean, you got me this bracelet that keeps on reminding me because I keep on saying, but God. But it's true. I mean, look at what happened with you. Look at what happened with me. Like to put these doctors and these nurses and these people around us and then for me to start building my relationship with you as a sisters in Christ more and more like a year ago, we never even thought this Mm -mm. Two completely people, completely different walks of life. And I feel like I have a warrior sister with me in this that has my same sarcastic laughing (laughs) about stuff along the way doing this but like you got me that neck pillow that's amazing i knew you would need it because that's the first thing i asked my husband to buy i'm like i need a neck pillow because you know you can make um like neck pillows out of Mm -hmm. towels that's what i would do for patients but i'm like those aren't those aren't that comfortable no that neck pillow well i i have to say harley keeps on trying to steal it from me (laughs) (laughs) because <laughs> she likes it but yeah but I mean like we even had that time where like you came over and we just sat on my bed and we were just like laughing and joking and stuff like that or like we do this podcast and stuff like that and I feel like this is kind of like therapy for us too mm-hmm. like we, we're getting this off our chest people are understanding like you know you do have to attack this with a positive attitude mm-hmm. you can't let the devil try to give you those doubts and those anxieties and and, and, and and those shortcomings because you are a child of God and God has already had the victory. The devil is already lost. He doesn't know it yet. We need to keep reminding him. Mm-hmm. We are a child of God. He is not welcome in our house. He's not welcome in our church. He's not working in on a friendship and he's not welcome in our family. And he's definitely not welcome in our life. Sometimes, yeah, I feel like yeah, he'll like say stuff to me or, and I'm like, nope. And I'm like, I just remind him who's the boss mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're not, and you're not going to take hold of my life. You're not going to make me anxious or nope. anything like that. No, nope. you're not going to try to tell me, oh, what the life expectancy is. Cause guess what? I already outlived it. Nice try. Let's try again. Oh, oh, you're going to tell me, oh, oh, the, these are the these are the side effects that can happen. Yeah, those are the side effects that can happen. Doesn't mean they're going to. Mm-hmm. That's nice. OK. OK, what next? Yeah, sometimes you just want to laugh at the devil and be like, <laughs> yep, I feel like God created sense of humor and laughter. So, oh, absolutely. I feel like God has a sense of humor, too. Mm-hmm. Sometimes he's probably like shaking at her, his head at us and being like, oh, why did you do that again? Yeah. like, <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Well, I was like, I was ju- I was telling my husband, I was like, see, I couldn't even let Chrissy have this one. We st- we're in we're in an all sense of the words now. <laughs> <laughs> That's us. We don't care. Like, we'll go out. We'll go out to eat. And we're like, food's falling out of our mouths. Like sometimes, <laughs> you know, and we're just laughing about it. We're just like, yeah. You still couldn't do that. Well, guess what? I can still eat. <laughs> but we were like, we're, we're definitely getting to know each other better. And I mean, the more that I, I get to know you, the more I love the fact that we have so many similarities. We never even thought how did all this happen? You're more organized and on time where I'm not. <laughs> we are. I think we balance each other out perfectly because you help me relax more and not be so uptight. I can be an uptight person. I can have a problem with control. You remind me that I need to not have so much control and I need to start just letting things go, enjoying. But you also make me realize to stop and I don't want to say stop and smell the roses. That's what I was thinking in my head. I was like, stop and smell the... I always say that when I, I walk by flowers... I try to, I'm like, stop and smell the flowers, everyone. Right? Because <laughs> flowers do smell good. But that's the thing is I think 
the devil wants us to focus so much on the world sometimes and all of the horribleness, we miss out on all the beauty. Mm -hmm. Like, look at where we live. Look at our children growing up. Look at our children getting baptized. The best gift a mother could ever have. A child getting baptized, loving God, and building that relationship. My husband coming back into his faith and being the man of God of the house and our relationship. I mean, because, you know, the devil likes to steal, kill and destroy, especially marriages and children and everything like that. Well, guess what? He tried again with this. And this has only brought me even closer with my husband. I don't know if it's done the same for you, but definitely it has. And I, I feel that the gathering is such a blessing in so many ways that it helps out in so many ways for people. I've had people reach out to me that just went to my conference and listened to my story and reached out to me on Facebook and heard about the situations like whatever you need. And that has been so incredibly humbling to know that I had that effect on so many people. Like me and you literally have a extremely giant army behind us, yeah. which helps in the time when we're down, you know? And I feel like your family is starting to become my family too. <laughs> They're just such a joy and so love. Actually, I do need to call your mom soon because she does need to help me with him and for Harley. But yeah, she, we get in the charter school. Yeah, she. my mom will sew up anything. Oh, I love your mom to death. She's just... So I like sweet. Every, I feel like everyone does, right? But she like, she would give the shoulder off her ba- or shoulder off her back. Mm. The she would give her shirt, shirt off her yes, back. That's what I was trying to say for mm-hmm. anybody. Or if she was cooking anything, she'd invite anybody in for to eat with. She, well, even your mother in law too. She brought food mm-hmm. by for me too. Yeah, which is amazing. And actually, even my community. I mean, they've they've raised money for me which has been so helpful because it actually will pay for Harley's cheering because I was worried about that. Now I just need to worry about how we're going to pay for Christmas. Um, But one thing at a time, God will provide. I already know that. He's already provided the way so far, so he will. Um, So I'm not going to worry about it because it's in God's hands. Mm -hmm. Um, Yep, everything is. So Absolutely. And my husband, he's he's been burning it at both ends, but I feel that... It, there's so many things that God has intervened. My family that was so distant are all coming together for me and calling me and praying for me and finding their way back to God, which makes me so happy. Maybe that's, you were saying like, what's the purpose for this? Maybe that's part of the purpose. There's been a lot of purpose like that because Bill's dad has been sober for a long time now since that surgery and he wants to come down because he wants to make sure they're not messing with his daughter-in-law. And, you know, he is a <laughs> c- good old Kentucky boy. And trust me, you don't want that big, fiery man in your face because, <laughs> oh, yeah. But I think it would be really great because now that he's sober, he it, I liked him before. But now that he's sober, I love him being around us and the kids and building that relationship and that trauma that he had with Bill has built more and more. Um, I mean, not the trauma, but the, it's been healing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what Your Bill needs. Mm-hmm. And then I've had people come to the house that would try to stay with me. Um, and they have walked in my house and they were like, I normally have pain but I walk in your house and I no longer am in pain the whole time I'm here. So I hope you don't mind if I come by. I'm like, (laughs) my door is always open. Come by whenever. That's my policy. I've always had an open door policy. I, I truly believe, you know, we're here for each other. And I also try to explain to them, I understand you think my situation is extremely serious, but if you have something that you need to get off your chest, you need to talk to I'm here because we are all going through our own trials and tribulations and we need to be here for each other's and sisters in Christ and, and men in Christ. And I, 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 your situation is not diminished just because of my situation. It is just as important in God's plan. And we need to, we need to step out and step up more for each other 
And you might be just a listening ear, or you might be a meal that we need to take, or it might just be that hug, that hug, you know, like Miss Jennifer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> giving us I, all the hugs I in the just world. I love her hugs, and I used to not be a hugger, mm-hmm. and then when my husband and I went through our separation, I became a hugger because I was like, I needed hugs during mm-hmm. that time, and I was like, hugs aren't that bad. No, not at all. And you know the best part about it is it almost feels like... I don't know. How do, how do I describe it? It almost feels like you're releasing what you need to release. Mm-hmm. So the cool thing is I got, my girlfriend got me to get my toes done. I saw they have fourth or like fourth, fourth of July, July things. Yep. Yeah. Um, so four of the workers hugged me before I left there. Hmm. Cause they were just like, I don't know how you're doing this. And I was like, but God, and that's why I keep, I keep on wearing this. Cause I was like, yeah, but God, I really do say that a lot. Oh my, oh my. Um, so yet last night I actually got a massage. I took your advice. That massage. Oh, that was heaven. And I'm doing a facial today. I'm getting a facial done because I wanted to get my face all clean just before radiation because you never know how it's going to affect my skin. So I had to start with a clean surface. So I'm doing that, but, um, I mean, I'm getting to know more people, spending time with more people, spending time with you, (laughs) which we definitely going to do more, but I mean, it's definitely uplifting. It's inspiring. I mean, I know you said that I originally inspired you, but I feel like we're inspiring each other. Mm -hmm. And I hope that by us doing this podcast is really going to inspire others to understand that there is hope out there. Like, don't let the let devil deceive you. You got any questions? You got any concerns? You want to cry, scream, yell? We are here. We are a phone call away, an email away. And we are willing to step up and step out and be there for you too. Mm -hmm. Just like we had other people. I mean, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, I've had all kinds of people like uh, instant message me or whatever or text me. I even like talked on the phone um, with this one girl's sister. And Mm -hmm. I thought it was just going to be her sister. Well, here it happened to be her whole family. Oh, wow. And I I was talking to all of them about... Because she was newly diagnosed with the glioblastoma. And so I was, like, talking about my experience. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes hearing that can just ease your mind. You feel like you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and in all this, that's the devil's work. He wants you to feel alone. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to do it. No. So we want this words. We want our words. We want this podcast to get out there to as many people as we can. We want to help as many people as we can. We want to show support to as many people as you can. And if anybody has any questions or any suggestions you want us to talk about um, or or anything, we are more than happy to talk in future podcasts about that. Um, Absolutely. You know, we just want you to know that God is love and God loves you Um, more than we could ever love you. He loves you. And you got any questions or anything, like, that's what we're here for. And some people, like, wonder, like, why did God do this to me? But it's not him doing anything. No. That's the devil putting those thoughts in your mind. Mm-hmm. But just like they say, God can take something that the devil created and do it for his good. And he mm-hmm. has abundant times over. Yeah, and I definitely feel like less anxious like i have no like i don't ever feel anxious i don't want to say never but it's about like little things like i don't even know like i'm cooking dinner and oh i might burn something like anxious about that or right but i'm a lot calmer calmer, yeah than i used to be like because i prayed for calmness and peace and everything so i don't I'm just free from that. I feel like it's almost like you. It's not that you come to terms with the situation, but we're doing faith on God. Mm-hmm. We have handed it over to God, and in that, we have found calmness. Mm-hmm. I used to try to control everything, like, mm-hmm. and I don't know why, but I felt like I had to prove myself, mm-hmm. and so I would try to control everything. But and then. 
Now I'm just like, whatever. I can't control this God. But it's in the same aspect, we are still being fighters. We are yes. going to fight, yeah. but we are going to put on God's armor mm-hmm. to fight. We are yeah. fighting not just physically. We are fighting a spiritual battle, and it is a fight. Yeah, and we different. are going to keep doing it. So please keep the prayers coming. They are working. Prayer works. It is so powerful. We have seen it. We have we have lived it. <laughs> and we do appreciate every single prayer everybody does. And if you feel you need a prayer from us, message us, comment us. We will definitely pray for you. I wouldn't even mind praying with somebody. Absolutely. I've done it a lot lately. <laughs> I have. So um, next time on the Sea Sisters, we're going to talk about our relatives' perspective. Come hear more on our podcast on Spotify, Apple, and YouTube. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget, even in the roughest waters, we know who calms the waves. We will see you again next time on the Sea Sisters.